Hi, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us on the We Thrive podcast, where we share stories from entrepreneurs around the world about how they're creating an impactful legacy. I'm your host, Casey Clark, and I'm the Chief Growth Officer of C. Clark Consulting. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing a longtime friend, Shay Kent, who is the author of She Is You, Unleash the Confident, Successful Woman Within. Ooh, I like it. So thank you so much for joining us. So tell us a little bit about you. Hi, thank you for having me. Uh, so yeah, I'm from originally from Colorado where the Rocky Mountains are absolutely majestic and beautiful and everything, but it does snow there. And I was totally tired of that, especially after the COVID lockdown. So now I live by the ocean in sunny Florida where it's warm all the time. You don't have to shovel rain. So that works out in our favor. (laughs) What took you to Florida aside from no snow? The Florida lifestyle of like flip flops and just living outside and the sand and the sun, like literally was all of the weather for sure. Yeah, for sure. But we love it down here. You know, my mom came down here with us. uh, So I have her right down the street. I just had a baby 11 months ago. So we started a little family and that was actually what spurred me on to write the book. I had been building an online business for like a coaching program and really struggling with that. And then I got pregnant and none of that mattered anymore. So I basically balled that all up into a big crumble, tossed that out, focused on having a healthy pregnancy, on having a healthy baby. And when she was six months old, I was like, you know, I've been wanting to write this book for five years now, I'm going to do it. And in between naps and feedings, I got it out in a month and was able to get the book out out of my head. And that the editing process is really where all the writing happens, by the way. <laughs> so it took me three months to edit. However, uh, as of the time of recording this, it comes out on Tuesday, officially out there into the world. I'm super excited for it. Awesome. So. That is awesome. So we'll just go ahead and ask on Tuesday, where will we be able to find the book? You can get it on Amazon, of course, but you can also get it if you want to support me a little bit more uh, on be a successful woman.com. And then also on there, you'll find I have a bunch of freebies that you can download if you so choose to. And then if you stay up to date with any of the upcoming books that I'm planning on writing as well. Awesome. So exciting. Well, we'll get more into those later, I'm sure. So I'm really curious with you writing this book about being a successful woman, what does thriving mean to you? Such a great question. Thriving to me is living in your truth, living in your values, living the way that you want to be living. So often than not, I feel like we are settling in life. A lot of people are on autopilot, not really excited to wake up in the morning, but not really you know, depressed to wake up in the morning. It's just kind of like, yeah, this is what it is. I'm working to my Friday to have my weekend so I can finally enjoy my life. Whereas I think when you're thriving, it's every day you get to enjoy your life. And that comes with being able to consciously create that life. And that's exactly, you know, what I have worked many years on doing myself. Like right now in this snapshot, this moment in time, I love my life so much. And I built it this way. It didn't happen by happenstance, you know, like it took a lot of structuring and working toward and and making it work out for me and that's ultimately what the book is designed to help people do as well i love it i can't wait to get it so what obstacles have you overcome i'm curious i know you mentioned you know you kind of threw things out the window with what you were doing before you're a new mom so what obstacles have you faced both personally and professionally So those would be the most recent obstacles for sure. Like becoming a new mom at 41. I had 41 years of kind of just doing whatever I wanted to with life. And all of a sudden, you know, I got a baby and she was premature and needed extra attention and extra work. And it was a lot of worry. So that was, was one recent struggle, but tracking back, I think, as most people do, we have these pivotal moments in time where we're really in the thick of it. We're in that crap. 
and we finally go, aha, I don't want to be this way anymore. And for me, that was when I was 26 years old, I was working waiting tables and partying at night. You know, if anybody out there is listening and they have waited tables before, you kind of know the culture, right? Like, yeah, you work, you spend your money, you party, you go home broke, then you do it all again the next day. And I didn't have any direction. And they offered me a management position. And I thought, okay, let me think about it. And I was like, wow, I could make a lot of money right now. You know, I think it was like $40,000, which at the time making $20 a shift, right? Like that was a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, and I was thought, you know what? If I say yes, this is it. Like this is as good as it's ever going to get is me here in a restaurant listening to these 18 year olds complain about how difficult their life is. And I'm gonna be 75 years old, not being able to spend time with my family or my grandkids and be here listening to 18 year olds talk about how horrible their life is. And, and so I was like, nope, eh, this, this is not gonna get me where I wanna go. Uh, and so I called them the next morning and I declined and I also straight up quit my job and then I got <laughs> my car <laughs> and I drove 45 minutes to the Colorado film school where I enrolled and I graduated with honors in about three years. And then I got going with my, my passion, which was, I always wanted to work in film. And so my very first gig was on the walking dead season two. Then I did American Idol and then I was on Mythbusters and like it's just a ton of reality shows, some scripted shows, feature films and was uh, was living living the dream. But the struggle really was in that not knowing what the heck I wanted to do with life and then just living in that cycle of, you know, I'm partying all the time. I have no idea what, what I want out of life and just being stuck until, you know, the aha moment of is this really what I want, you know, in 20, 30 years down the line and then being able to, you know, pull yourself out of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's very interesting. You went from the restaurant world to entertainment. And coach. I'm not sure there's something in between there and coaching, but very interesting background. Yes. I've hopped around a lot. I like to say I'm the master of the pivot. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. You know, it's funny life when you're, on the life journey and it's like okay yeah i'm working in a restaurant now i'm doing film and television now i did some real estate uh, flipping then i'm a home stager now i'm teaching other home stagers how to do marketing now i'm doing an online coaching business oh my gosh now i'm mom none of those things like crack until you look back and you're like oh yeah it totally makes sense all of these steps that happened along the way that didn't make any sense at the time and, you know, I think that's true for everybody, right? Like we all have all of our experiences that collectively create where we are today. Yeah. And when you get to look back at all of that and go, okay, well, that's, that really is how I ended up like right here in this moment. Mm -hmm. And wow, what a journey. And, and like really see how awesome you truly are because we've all gone through lots of crap. You know, we've all had all of the hiccups and pitfalls and whatever. And, and now, we all get to experience, you know, each day brand new and hopefully have some gratitude in there. And if you're not living your life, you know, and thriving, then uh, it's time to make a change. Agreed. Agreed. It's so interesting you say that. I So for one, it's interesting you were in film because I just had a first experience of helping someone film a movie out west. So <laughs> the whole snow thing, we drove through South Dakota to get to Washington State and hit snow. And I'm like, why are we getting snow at the end of March? So I can completely understand why you left Colorado. <laughs> That's when we get the most snow is in March. Oh, wow. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Very different than Maryland. So very interesting. So I say that to say that the person who wrote this movie literally casted the people that he had met over the last 20 years or so, and every person played themselves. So it was fascinating because you never know until you look back of, wow, this is how all of these little pieces fit together, even though they don't even look like they'd be in the same puzzle box. <laughs> like, right. You know, 
it's awesome to be able to look back. And then, like you said, you know, it kind of leads us to where we are now and we can evaluate, do we like that or do we not? And change mm -hmm. it. yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some resources that you've used when kind of shifting, or as you said, mastering the pivot? <laughs> Uh, so the very first that I'm going to mention is actually where we met at Sci Seminars. Uh, that one, that really helped me, like all of their um, their personal development seminar company and being able to have that space to really explore myself really, really helped. Before then, I, I was looking at books and podcasts and stuff, which the ones I want to mention are The Morning Miracle by Hal Elrod. That book is a game changer, like straight off the bat. And then I also really love, and I read every single year, The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone, because it really helps me pull myself out of like, you know, oh, what I'm doing and building a business is hard. And then I read that book and I'm like, I'm not even like scratching the surface of what I could be doing with my time. Uh, and so that helps me get into perspective and then really kick some butt moving forward. And then um, having my own time, it gets really important for me to be able to step away from everything, the family, business, life, work, you know, and just have some time to sit in quiet and reflect or plan out my next steps or just do nothing. I think there's, uh, it's beautiful when you can not do anything for a little while. And, you know, if you are a entrepreneur, a solopreneur, you have a family, like, obviously it's really difficult to fit in the whole me time thing yeah so Still it's <laughs> it's like okay if i can grab just 20 minutes and mm -hmm. sit in the bathtub like by myself then that's good and that could be good enough you know um after i do my book launch i'm actually doing a solo vacation all by myself for a weekend nobody's coming with me i think i'm not even going to take the phone like it's just going to be me and the beach and a good book nice well i will definitely be accepting all of the positive energy you send from the beach it's been a while for me so yeah. send you those beach vibes the salty yes. sea air yes please <laughs> <laughs> so are there any other resources um that we like to talk about before we get into legacy um in a personal development capacity um, another really great book is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. That one you could probably say like is the granddaddy of them all. Um, they, you know, all personal development kind of, I think branches from that one book. Now it was written a really long time ago and so it's a little wordy and some sections are a little difficult to understand if you're not like in that mindset of how they spoke back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, but that one is really good as well. And then if we're talking, you know, entrepreneurial, um, you know, different programs and things that I like to use is like Canva makes my life easier when creating graphics for pretty cheap. It's like $12 for a month and I can create a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Um, and uh, what was the other one I wanted to mention? You know what I'm really having fun with is TikTok. Yeah? Yeah. Like I, I was so resistant to getting on that platform and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get on here and see what's up. And it's really fun and really easy to use. <laughs> that one actually, I enjoy doing that a lot. There is a lot of resistance around that channel. So it's interesting. Like I was at a seminar yesterday and this lady was like, literally I lost my business and I spent a year and a half scrolling TikTok. <laughs> she's like, don't judge me. But like, she's like, I loved it. And I learned so much. And then she made a joke and did a little dance and said, I even know how to dance. So, but you can learn a ton of different things on TikTok. So. And it's having that joy, which goes along with thriving. You know, if yep. you're really thriving in life, then you can allow yourself to have the joy that's maybe not being productive in some way that you think that you should be being productive. It's like, you know what, I'm going to do this because I like it, period. You don't have to explain it to anybody. Yes. Who cares what people think? Like, you just get to do it because you want to. Yes. Agreed a thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. So let's talk a little about legacy. So you're writing a book for women. You just had a little girl. I'm really eager to hear what you have to say about legacy. I think legacy, you know, it's so easy just to think of legacy as being like something you hand down to your next generation, your kin. Mm -hmm. What legacy really is, is having an idea or a purpose that you're putting out into the world that people can get behind and then continue that even after you're gone. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think legacy is. It's like, what am I doing in the now that's creating something better for other people? And then we can sort of create a movement, if you will. And then others can share this and trickle it down from generation to generation or from country to country or you know, when you're long gone, people are still talking about it. Maybe not you, but they're talking about the things that you did or, or what you stood for. Um, and I believe that's legacy. Yeah. I mean, Think and Grow Rich is a great example. Like you said, mm -hmm. that was written so long ago, you know, and we're yeah. still using the principles today. Oh, yeah, yeah for sure. Like to be able to write something like that, that would be amazing. Unfortunately, I won't know because I will be long gone if it's still <laughs> circulating in town, right? Hey, you build it and they will come, so keep writing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so speaking of your writing, are you open to kind of sharing ideas on what your next books are? You mentioned you have more in your brain. I do. So what was funny with writing this first book, first book I've ever written, right? I'm in this in the middle of it going, oh, I could do an entire book on that subject alone. Yeah, I'll write that down. I'm like, that down. So I've come up with a series of the She Is You, essentially. So the follow-up to She Is You is going to be, you know, I Am Her. And that's going to be the next set. So in She Is You, I give the blueprint for how to start living the life on your terms and creating that dream life. And once you've completed all of those steps, there's like a whole next step of things that you could be doing with life. And so that's what the next one's gonna be like. Uh, I also wanna write, she is wealthy. And that's going to be all about uh, financial education and getting over your money blocks so you can truly thrive and live in abundance. Um, and then I want to do another one called she is happy. And that will be about, you know, being happy and living in your dreams and, and all that. I was thinking about possibly doing She is Magnetic and talking about manifesting because I definitely manifested some cool stuff. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, we definitely create our reality. That's for sure. And where it, we live. it is so true. So true. Yeah. One of the funnest things to manifest is parking spots, I found. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> you know, like if you go out and it's super busy and it's Friday night and you're downtown and you can never find parking, manifest that parking spot right in front of where you're going. Oh yeah, it's fun. That is too funny. That reminds me of my mom. She always gets front row parking. I'm like, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Master manifester right there. Yeah. So I have to ask, do you still workshop every day? I know that was a skill we learned. The workshop, I do not. And I really could start doing that um, again because it really is very helpful. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, same. I visualize a lot of things, you know, but mm -hmm. yeah, as far as the actual workshopping, something I could definitely add back in. And it was actually fun for me. My word this year is joy. So definitely trying to bring the joyful things in. So heck yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my workshop space, like, is so much fun and it is a really cool place to hang out it's like why don't i do this yeah exactly <laughs> so, i love it all right so aside from your books i'm sure your your book has a ton of nuggets in it i'm sure the future ones are going to have a ton of nuggets what is one nugget you would give someone who's kind of just starting out in life today mm. just one huh oh, okay <laughs> make it a good one i would say to decide on what your why is and mm -hmm. live within that so the idea of 
like the way I talk about it and finding your why is like, like, what's the ultimate bigger purpose? Yes. And how do you really truly want to live your life? Like, why do you want to live your life in this specific way? Mm -hmm. And from there, you're able to kind of drop down and figure out like, what are my values? What do I stand for? What do I not stand for? And being able to live within these boundaries that you've set these value systems and also setting actual boundaries of like what am i willing to accept in my life and what am i not willing to accept um and being able to have those in place um for others to treat you right because you you teach people how to treat you yeah and then also sticking to your own boundaries with yourself because it's really easy to let yourself off the hook mm -hmm. all of those things come underneath that big have your big why like, like what is the end goal, the end result, like the, the big picture that gets you up in the morning? Because if you can envision that, and especially the earlier on, the better, when you keep that in the front of your mind, then it's real easy to live within your truth. Yeah. And that's where then, like I mentioned, you begin to really thrive and enjoy every day. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Awesome. I love it. So anything else that you want to add that we haven't covered today? Oh, girl, I could talk all day long. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm go well, with no. <laughs> if you want to talk to Shay more, I'm sure she has a ton of ways that you can reach her online. So Shay, why don't you share those with us? I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as the Shay Kent. You can also reach me uh, on email, bshakehent at gmail.com if you want to just hit me up there. And then, of course, my website is beasuccessfulwoman.com. Awesome. And you'll also see her perusing TikTok now and again. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm on TikTok. I don't know if uh, anybody follows me over there, but I do have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, I definitely appreciate you being on today. It's so great to hear where you are these days. Thank you so much for having me on. I was so excited to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'd also like to thank our music sponsor, Stephen Lamar Moore, who created the music for this podcast. And thank you to all our listeners.